directed acyclic graphs and the topological ordering. If an undirected graph has no cycles, then it has an extremely simple structure. Each of its connected components is the tree, but it is possible for a directed graph to have no directed cycles and still have a very rich structure. For example, such graphs can have a large number of edges. If we start with the node, set 1, 2, 3 until n, and uh, include an edge ij wherever i is less than j. Then the resulting directed graph has edges to edges but no cycles. If a directed graph has no cycles, we call it naturally enough a directed acyclic graph or a DAG for short. The term DAG is typically pronounced as a word not spelled out as an acronym. In the figure, we see an example of a DAG, although it may take some checking to convince oneself that it really has no directed cycles. The problem. DAG are a very common structure in computer science because many kinds of uh, dependency networks of the type we discussed in section 3.1 are acyclic. Thus, DAGs can be used to encode the precedence relations or dependencies in a natural way. Suppose we have a set of tasks labeled the set 1, 2, 3 until n that need to be performed and there are dependencies among them stipulating for certain pairs i and j that i must be performed before j. For example, the tasks may be courses with the prerequisite requirements stating that certain courses must be taken before others, or the tasks may be correspond to a pipeline of computing jobs with assertions that the output of job i is used in determining the input to job j and hence job i must be done before job j. We can represent such an interdependent set of tasks by introducing a node for each task and a directed edge ij whenever i must be done before j. If the precedence relation is to be at all meaningful, the resulting graph g must be a DAG. Indeed, if it contained a cycle c, there would be no way to do any of the tasks in c. Since each task in c cannot begin until some other one completes, no task in c could ever be done, since none could be done first. Let's continue a little further with the picture of DAX as precedence relations. Given a set of tasks with dependencies, it would be natural to seek a valid order in which the tasks could be performed so that all dependencies are respected. Specifically for a directed graph G, we say that a topological ordering of G is an ordering of its nodes as v1, v2, v3, and so on to vn, so that for every age vi and vj, we have i is less than j. In other words, all ages point forward in the ordering. A topological ordering on tasks provides an order in which they can be safely performed. When we come to the task vj, all the tasks that are required to precede it have already been done. In the previous figure, we've already labeled the nodes of the DAG from the part with a topological ordering. Note that each edge indeed goes from a lower indexed node to a higher indexed node. In fact, we can view a topological ordering of G as providing an immediate proof that G has no cycles via the following. 3.18, if G has a topological ordering, then G is a DAG. Proof suppose, by way of contradiction, that G has a topological ordering, V1, V2, V3 until Vn, and also has a cycle C. If Vi be, let Vi be the lowest indexed node on C, and let Vj be the node on C just before Vi, thus Vj Vi is an H, but by our choice of I, we have j greater than i, 
which contradicts the assumption that v1, v2, v3, and so on until vn was a topological ordering. The proof of a, a cyclicity that a topological ordering provides can be very useful, even visually. In figure 3.7, we have drawn the same graph as the previous DAG, but with the nodes laid out in the topological ordering. It is immediately clear that the graph is a DAG since each edge goes from left to right. Computing a topological ordering. The main question we consider here is the converse of uh, 3.18. Does every DAG have a topological ordering? And if so, how do we find one efficiently? The method to do this for every DAG would be very useful. It would show that for any prece uh, precedence relation on a set of tasks without cycles, there is an efficiently computable order in which to perform the tasks. Designing and analyzing the algorithm. In fact, the converse of 3.18 does hold, and we establish this via an efficient algorithm to compute a topological ordering. The key to this lies in finding a way to get started. Which node do we put at the beginning of the topological ordering? Such a node V1 would need to have no incoming edges, since any such incoming edge would violate the defining property of uh, the topological ordering that all edges point forward. Thus, we need to prove the following fact. 3.19. In every deck G, there is a node V with no incoming edges. Let G be a directed graph in which every node has at least one incoming edge. We show how to find a cycle in G. This will prove the claim. We pick any node V and begin following edges backward from V since V has at least one incoming edge UV. We can walk backward to U. Then, since U has at least one incoming edge XU, we can walk backward to X, and so on. We can continue this process indefinitely, since every node we encounter has an incoming edge. But after n plus one steps, we will have visited some node W twice. If we let C denote the sequence of nodes encountered between successive visits to W, then clearly C forms a cycle. In fact, the existence of such a node V is all we need to produce a topological ordering of G by induction. Specifically, let us claim by induction that every DAG has a topological ordering. This is clearly true for DAGs on one or two nodes. Now suppose it is true for DAGs with up to some number of nodes n. Then, given a DAG G on n plus 1 nodes, we find a node V with no incoming edges, as guaranteed by 3.19. We place V first in the topological ordering. This is safe since all edges out of V will point forward. Now G minus the singleton set V is a DAG, since deleting V cannot create any cycles that weren't there previously. Also, G minus the singleton set V has n nodes, so we can apply the induction hypothesis to obtain a topological ordering of G minus the singleton set V. We append, append the nodes of G minus the set V in this order after V. This is an ordering of G in which all edges point forward, and hence it is a topological ordering. Thus we have proved the desired converse of 3.18. 3.20. If G is a DAG, then G has a topological ordering. The inductive proof contains the following algorithm to compute a topological ordering of G. To compute a topological ordering of G, find a node V with no incoming edges and order it first. Delete V from G. 
and then recursively compute the topological ordering of G minus the set V and app append this order after V. In figure 3.8, we show that the sequence of uh, node deletions that occurs when this algorithm is applied to the graph in figure 3.7, the shaded nodes in each iteration are those with no incoming agencies, the crucial point, which is what 3.19 guarantees, is that when we apply this algorithm to a DAG, there will always be at least one such node available to delete. To about the running time of this algorithm, we note that identifying a node V with no incoming addresses and deleting it from G can be done in big O of n time. Since the algorithm runs for n iterations, the total running time is big O of n squared. This is not a bad running time. And if G is very dense, containing theta of n squared addresses, then it is linear in the size of the input. But we may well want something better when the number of agencies n is much less than n squared. In such a case, a running time of big O of n plus n could be a significant improvement over theta of n squared. In fact, we can achieve a running time of big O of uh, n plus n using the same high level algorithm, iteratively deleting nodes with no incoming addresses. We simply have to be more efficient in finding these nodes and we do this as follows. We declare a node to be active if it has not yet been deleted by the algorithm and we explicitly maintain two things. A, for each node W, the number of incoming addresses that W has from active nodes and b, the set s of all active nodes in G that have no incoming addresses from other active nodes. At the start, all nodes are active, so we can initialize a and b with a single pass through the nodes and the addresses. Then each iteration consists of selecting a node v from the set s and deleting it. After deleting V, we go through all nodes W to which V had an age, and uh, subtract 1 from the number of active incoming addresses that we are maintaining for W. If this causes the number of active incoming addresses to W to drop to 0, then we add W to the set S. Proceeding in this way, we keep track of nodes that are eligible for deletion at all times while spending constant work per age over the course of the whole algorithm.